In this video, we're going to talk about how to deal with slow cells inside of Marimo. It's an important topic because Marimo notebooks in the end are reactive. That means that if I have a setup like this where I've got a variable A over here and then the cell below over here is reusing that variable to define this new variable B, and then this final cell over here just shows the value of B, then the way the Marimo works is that if I ever were to make a change to this variable over here, so let's say I change that to 11, then by simply running this cell over here, this cell over here runs as well as this one down below. This reactive nature comes with a lot of benefits, one of which is that I can just use user interface elements over here to define this variable A and everything will update naturally. But it does also mean that if, for example, this cell over here was a very slow cell, that everything would automatically run. And that might not always be what you want. So just to simulate this, I'm gonna put a time.sleep in here. Let's set that to two. And note, by the way, that when you run a cell that's slow, you can see on the right-hand side how long the cell actually ran. So yeah, we're sleeping and it takes about two seconds to run, that's great. But if I were now to rerun this one cell, we're gonna see that the second cell actually takes a while to run. So, takes a while, not great. So what might be some ways to prevent this? Well, there's two main techniques, one of which can be configured right here in the UI at the bottom over here. You can notice that there's this on startup setting over here, as well as a on cell change setting. And I can just click here, and when I do, it is going to stop auto running. I need to manually run through the cells in order to make sure that an update actually happens. So in this case, if I were to change this value to 20, now nothing else ran besides this one cell, but you do get a visual indicator. There's a little bit of yellow attached to these two cells down below that indicate that the value that you're looking at might not reflect the updated version. And in this particular case, this cell needs to run in order for this cell over here to update, but what I can do is I can enter the cell, and on a Mac I can hit Command Enter to run it. It's gonna run. And then if I wanna see the update in the final cell, I need to run that manually too. The benefit of this approach is that you do get full manual control over what runs and what doesn't. The downside of this approach is that you do manually have to go through every single cell if you want them to run. For very small notebooks, that can be fine, but for very long notebooks, this can be a little bit tedious. For those situations, there is something else that you could also do, and that is that you can go down below over here and hit this big yellow play button. This will run all the cells, even if you have lazy mode turned on. So just for good measure, I said 8 to 28, and if I now hit this one button, then everything can run, and also note that there is a shortcut for this as well. Now, there is also a alternative technique that you can use that involves using a run button, and this is useful if you want to have very tight control over what parts of the notebooks run when. And uh, let's set that up. So here's the new setup, and let's go through some of the building blocks first. I still have my variable A on top over here, but next I'm defining this run button. From the UI submodule, you gotta use the run underscore button function here. I'm not using a normal button. This is definitely its own separate thing. Next, I am reusing this run button right here down below, and I'm using it inside of this Marimo stop call. Now, the reason that this pattern works is because this run button really does behave differently than a normal button. This button has a value that's set to false by default, but when you click it, it is briefly set to true. By setting it briefly to true, you can trigger an update, which in this particular case means that this cell over here would run, and then after all the dependents ran, that's when this run button's value will automatically reset. It really is a special behavior, but if we consider what this allows us to do, it does allow us to define a boolean over here, and whenever this boolean value over here is set to true, then we are going to stop. We are not gonna run this cell. That's what this mo.stop function does. It also allows us to show some pretty markdown to indicate to the user what must happen. And only under the right circumstances will this cell actually do its thing. And just to demonstrate this, I'm gonna try and set the value here to 22, just to put in one value. And when I do this, you're gonna notice that, hey, the text that I defined over here, that's now being presented. The rest of the cell isn't running, and the cell below over here that's trying to show the true value of B, that's now complaining that an ancestor has stopped. So something needs to happen in order for this value to appear and effectively in order for this heavy compute to take place. However, notice what happens when I click this button, it starts running, and when it's done, then I see this new value over here. So there you have it. 
If you're dealing with heavy compute loads that take a while to run, there are plenty of mechanisms inside of Marimo to make sure that they only run when you want to.